Hello there, and in this video we're going to continue our discussion of congruences. So remember, for some natural number or integer n, and integers a and b, we say that a is congruent to b modulo n if n divides b minus a. That is, if you subtract b and a, and regardless of the direction, it doesn't really matter, if n divides into that difference with zero remainder, then we say that a is congruent to b modulo n. So in this video, we're going to be considering some basic equations associated to congruences, namely ones of the form x, x is congruent to alpha modulo n, alpha is congruent to x modulo n, and alpha is congruent to b modulo x. We'll consider these three types of equations and discuss how to solve each of them in their appropriate context. So before we dive into our discussion of solving basic congruence equations, let's first do an example to sort of illustrate how to verify that two numbers are congruent to one another. So as a first example, let us see is 5 congruent to 12 modulo 3. So this is equivalent to asking, does 3 divide into 12 minus 5? So 12 minus 5 is equal to 7, and 3 does not divide into 7. So if 3 does not divide into 7, then that means 5 is not congruent to 12 modulo 3. So what is an alternative way of doing this type of problem? So we can, since we're working in modulo 3, we can create three columns. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on. So if we locate 5 and we locate 12, an equivalent way of asking this question is do 5 and 12 fall into the same exact column? The answer is no. But from here we can also see that 5 is congruent to a lot of other numbers. For example, 5 is congruent to 2, 8 is congruent to 14, 0 is congruent to 9, 10 is congruent to 4, and you can come up with a lot of different equivalence relations uh, by choosing any two numbers in a particular column. And this also allows us to solve equations. So let's consider the first basic equation. So example, solve the equation 4 is congruent to x modulo 5. So let's solve this equation for all values x that satisfy. So we're working in modulo 5, so we can create five columns. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, and we can continue onwards until we can find some pattern. So we're trying to figure out what numbers are congruent to 4. So we see some possible solutions, for example, 9, 14, and 19. We can also work in the negative direction as well. For example, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5 as well. Let's line that up a little bit more. So that is negative 1 is also congruent to 4 modulo 5. So we can say that x is equal to negative 1, 9, 14, 19, and so on. So how can we generalize this a little bit more? So notice that we can rewrite this in the form x is equal to all multiples of 5 with a remainder of 4, where k is a possible integer. So this is my claim that this is the set of all possible solutions. So for example, if k is equal to 0, that is going to give us 4. If k is equal to negative 2, this is going to be, so negative 2 times 5 is going to be negative 10. Negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6, so x is equal to negative 6 is also a possible solution. And you'll see that that generates that entire column. So that means this, so if our equation is 4 is congruent to x modulo 5, 
that means x must be equal to 5k plus 4, where k is any integer. So that's the solution. So let's do another example. So example 2. Solve negative 7 is congruent to x modulo 4. So we can easily create uh, more columns. So we can create four columns starting with negative 7. So negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. So negative 7 is congruent to what modulo 4? So negative 3, 1, and 5 are particular solutions to this, but it's not the general solution. So how can we generalize this process? So we can rewrite this as x is equal to 4k minus 7 if we focus on the original, or we can just focus on the first least positive number uh, that it is congruent to. Because notice if we add if we add 8 to this, then this is also going to be a solution because 8 minus 7 is 1, and that should also work because you know any multiple of 4 plus a number that's congruent should also be a number that is congruent. So we can also say that x is going to be equal to 4k plus 1, where k is an element of the integers. And you can probably do that for any possible number, because this is probably the more preferred form in terms of solutions. So let's look at another example. So example 3. Solve the congruence equation. X is congruent to 3 modulo 7. So it's very important to notice that if X is congruent to 3, that means 3 must be congruent to X modulo 7 as well. So then we can proceed with the same exact structure as we did in the previous um, examples. So if this is true, then that means what? That means x must be equal to 7k plus 3, where k is an arbitrary integer. So that would be the general solution to this congruence equation. So let's look at our last type of congruence equation, or our last basic type of congruence equations. So let's solve negative 3 is congruent to 14 modulo x. So how do we interpret this? So from the definition, this is true if and only if x divides 14 minus negative 3. Or negative 3 minus 14, uh, but in this case that's going to be equal to 17. So x must divide evenly into 17. So another way of looking at this is asking what are the factors of this number 17 because those are the only things that are going to divide evenly into 17 which are solutions to this equation. So the factors of 17 are plus or minus 1 and also plus or minus 17 because 17 is a prime number so these are the only four integers that are going to divide into 17 evenly. So if that is the case then that means if negative 3 is congruent to 14 modulo x then that means x must be equal to plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 17. So those are the four solutions uh, to this equation. So another example, solve the congruence equation through uh, 5 is congruent to 17 modulo x. So 5 is congruent to 17 modulo x, that means x must divide evenly into 17 minus 5 which is equal to 12. So the factors of 12 as we know are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. So that means the solutions to this congruence equation are the numbers plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12 i.e. the factors or the integer factors of 12. So what if we're asked to solve 3 is congruent to negative 3 modulo x. 
So that means x must divide into 3 minus negative 3, which is equal to 6. So that means x must be long to which set? So what are the factors of 6? Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. So here's an interesting uh, problem. Uh, solve. 5 is congruent to 5 modulo x. So that means x must divide evenly into 5 minus 5, which is 0. So what numbers divide evenly into 0? Well, that's going to be all non-zero integers. So that means x must belong to the set plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, and so on. Or more compactly, x is the set of all integers uh, except for 0. Either one of those representations will be fine. <clears throat> so, what do we have? So, one special property that you can probably verify that for a congruent to b modulo x, we can say that x is equal to plus or minus 1 are always solutions. So how can you verify that claim? And well, this is true since plus or minus 1 always divides b minus a. And this is just some uh, basic uh, congruence equations, namely x is congruent to alpha modulo n, uh, alpha is congruent to x modulo n. In a way, these two are pretty much the same exact type of equation, since if x is congruent to alpha, alpha is congruent to x. And also we discussed uh, the equation uh, alpha is equal to beta uh, modulo x. And these are some solution strategies on how to solve these basic congruence equations.